You know what that means, right? It's your boy Cupid and welcome to best cubes of the year. Hey guys, it's Jesse. So this video is gonna be working pretty similarly to last year's. We're gonna have different people talking about different groups of puzzles. If you guys wanna see more of Cubehead, stick around to the end because he's gonna be talking about our favorite three by threes from this year. But to get us started with our first group of puzzles, let's go to our good friend, Steven. Hello, I'm Steven coming to you all the way from the magical land of Ohio. The first thing I'd like to say is that I'm flattered that Phil thinks I'm good enough at Pyraminx to ruin the production quality of this video by including me. But without further ado, this is the Waylong Pyraminx. It's my main, I love this thing. It's fast, smooth, stable, comes in around $15, which is pretty reasonable for a flagship puzzle, but it does have some issues. The first is that the tips are slow. There's no getting around it. The tips on this puzzle are not as good as others. You'll get used to it, but it's something to note. It also comes with a transparent core that's really fragile and probably will break. In fact, it might be broken already when you get it. We do include an extra stronger one in the package, but it's kind of annoying that you have to swap it. I forgot to mention this, but make sure you get the standard version. The maglev is just way too fast, and I'm still scarred from when it tried to kill me last summer. <laughs> <laughs> at my last comp just a few weeks ago, someone asked if they could throw a pyraminx at my face. I just can't get away from it. Please don't buy it. If you don't want to deal with those issues, the MGC is another choice. It's fine, but you are paying $21 for frosted plastic and performance that's comparable to the Waylong at best. It doesn't have braking issues and the tips are better, but that's about all it has going for it over the Waylong. It's good for some people, but I think most people will do better with the Waylong. Finally, we have the RS, which is a solid budget puzzle. Both versions are pretty reasonable, but the Maglev is only a dollar or two cheaper than the Waylong, so if you're gonna go for that, just get a Waylong. It doesn't have adjustment features, but it performs pretty well and doesn't have any major issues. One thing you should note is that the tips fall off fairly easily, sometimes when it hits the table after a solve. So if you find tensions you like, it might be a good idea to glue the tips on to prevent DNFs. All right, I'm back. I am not a very good cube solver, but I'm already here, so might as well talk about it. The Ganon Hints came out quite a while ago, but I still think it's the best option. It's really fast, smooth, stable, and it's great out of the box. This is also the only one I have, again, because I think it's the best. However, it is pretty expensive, so if you want to save a little bit of money, the Waylong is another good option. It only comes in a maglev version, so it's very fast, and it's also stable, but the stability comes at the expense of some of the Gans fluidity. Just like for Pyraminx, if you're trying to save even more money, the RS line is a good option. Both versions make sense, they're both good puzzles, but if you want to save money, just get the standard. It's not that much different and it's quite a bit cheaper. Rounding out the video, we have Clock. Get it? Because it's round. Anyway, just buy the Chi. It's the only puzzle that's remotely decent. If you care about speed at all, this is the only viable option. I guess if you just want to know how to solve it, the Shangshao is fine, but buy the Chi and thank me later. Okay, so let's talk about Megaminx. So our top picks for Megaminx are the YJ Yuhu V2 and the Dian V2. These Megaminxes are really, really great. And I think the majority of top Megaminx solvers are using this. If they're not, they're using some form of Galaxy, which is an older puzzle. The main draw of the Yuhu V2 is that it is absolutely a great deal. It's one of the cheaper Megaminxes on the market, but it has world-class performance. People have been averaging sub 30 on this, so that's pretty insane on economy puzzle. And I think that's really impressive and is a good reason to check this cube out. And if you like a smaller Megaminx, definitely check out the Diane. The grip assistance feature is a little more subtle, so the Mega Minx doesn't look all crazy with the indents or anything, and the Mega Minx is very compact and very comfortable to turn and hold, so this is an option if you're committed to a smaller size Mega Minx. So if you're into square one, definitely check out the MGC square one. This is the top square one right now on the market. I would say most top square one solvers are using some form of this. Some of them are modded, some of them are less modded. A lot of people are using this and I was fortunate enough to be at the event Northeast Championships when we got those two five averages from Max and Samir. It was absolutely ridiculous because people didn't think five averages would be a thing or maybe they did, but it, you know, it was maybe sometime in the future people would get it. And I think at least some of the credit goes to this fantastic puzzle. 
All right, so let's talk about 2x2s. Two 2x2s two two are actually pretty open right now. You can use a wide variety of hardware, starting with the Valk 2. Now, the Valk 2 is kind of like a mythical creature. It exists, but at the same time, it kind of doesn't exist. What I mean by that is the Valk 2 is considered discontinued by the manufacturer, but there are still units floating around, like this one. People do use it to very high success. Uh, you might notice that a lot of Zane's averages are on the Valk 2. It's very reliable, turning is really solid, and generates fantastic results. So the Valk 2, if you can get one, is really good. The next one is the GAN 251M. We recommend at least the Pro or the Leap. Uh, this is the one with the core corner magnets, and this cube is very stable, and it's also a tad larger. So if you like a larger cube that's perhaps easier to hold, this is a really nice choice. And it also has that crispy GAN feel that is really pleasant to turn. Last but not least, we have these two cubes by Moyu. Uh, this one is the Waypo WRS, and this is the RS2 Evolution. So these are very, very similar, except this cube has adjustable magnets. I think the feel is so similar that to most people, they're not very distinguishable until you adjust the settings on this cube. So if you want a peak performance MoU cube, this is a really good choice. People have been getting really good averages this year on this cube. And if you want something that's no nonsense and has all the fundamental features, the RS2M Evolution is a really good pick. I recommend this cube to a lot of people getting into two by two because it's so good for the price. All right, moving on to 4x4. So 4x4 hardware hasn't really changed much the past year. We're still on the Aosu WRM and the MGC 4x4. So Aosu WRM is smaller, more compact, and the feel is more cohesive. So when you're turning the puzzle, you feel like the pieces are touching each other more than the MGC. The MGC feels like there's a little more open space inside of it. And when you turn it, it has a more tactile and crispy feel. It's also a little bit larger, but both of these cubes generate really good results on a world-class level and it's up to you to figure out which one you like better. If it helps, the MGC is very affordable. The price is excellent and it's like borderline economy even though it's their flagship and a good performing cube. So definitely factor in the price when you pick a cube. Hey guys, I'm back to talk about big cubes. So let's go ahead and start with 7x7 here. Our first pick is going to be the MGC 7x7. So this is the same from last year. And it's also still by far the best budget 7x7. It's extremely quick, very reliable. It's very stable. It really just checks off pretty much a lot of the boxes that you'd want for a 7x7 while also maintaining that really, really great price. However, this cube does finally have some good competition this year. And that is going to be the Moyu Aofu WRM. It's quite small, much smaller than the MGC, and I honestly really like the more compact size. I think a lot of pro cubers are really liking it as well. This cube has really fast and light turning. It's also very, very stable and just overall is very cohesive. It just feels really well put together. It does have frosted plastic, which I'm not a big fan of, but uh, like with any frosted plastic cube, it does wear off with enough use. And overall, I think the cube is great. I think it's definitely better than the MGC. So the MGC is $36, while the Aofu is $50. Honestly, though, I think for a premium 7x7, $50 is really not too bad. You can spend more than that on some 3x3s. So it's really up to you if you really want to get into 7x7 seriously and you really like smaller cubes as well, or also if you just want a really nice 7x7 to turn, definitely check out the Aofu WRM. But if your budget is a little tighter and you still want a really solid cube, the MGC is still a very good choice. All right, moving on to six by six. I'm gonna sound like a bit of a broken record here, but we've got the MGC once again, and our other option is the new MoYu flagship, the Aoshi WRM. So first let's touch on the MGC six by six again. Really, really solid, very stable, has a pretty fast and kind of bubbly feeling. The pieces are very rounded off. It also has completely glossy finish. It's also a more standard six by six size. The Aoshi WRM on the other hand is smaller once again. It feels much more flat. Uh, the pieces are kind of feel tight together. The cube is also very quick and stable, but has a kind of sandier feel. I think the Aoshi is the best 6x6 on the market though. This cube is really, really good. And I'm glad that there's finally been an improvement in 6x6 hardware. It's been a long time coming. So again, there is a pretty steep jump in price. The MGC 6x6 is 23 and the Aoshi WRM is 44. But once again, like with the 7x7s, I think you really get what you pay for. This cube is a lot more premium, I would say, and definitely an improvement over the MGC. So for the best 6x6 of the year, I've got to give it to the Aoshi WRM. For the best 6x6 on a budget, MGC still wins hands down.
All right, and now moving on to five by five. Our first pick is for the best budget cube, which is still, once again, the MGC five by five. This cube really holds up. It's still a viable option after another year. And at only $23, it's still very, very cheap. The MGC did get some pretty good competition this year. I think the Diane Nisha five by five is really solid. This has absolutely become my new main five by five and it's really gotten me into the event. It has an extremely stable, very buttery smooth feel. It's really quiet and fast. The cube feels extremely cohesive and the pieces really feel tight together. I really like the way this cube turns. It can be a bit locky. I will say that you have to kind of get used to the cube. You can't force your way through turns like you can on some other cubes. For some people, this is definitely going to be a negative. I know there's some pro 505 solvers that I've given this to and they really just don't like it, but there's been some other ones that I've given it to and they really do like it. So I really think you'll probably just have to try it for yourself to see if it works for you and your turning style. But I still think it's a really solid recommendation. Of all the 505s you can get, this is definitely up there for the best one. It comes in two versions, a light magnet version and a strong magnet version for 38. Uh, honestly, there's really not that much of a difference between the two. So we also just want to make you guys aware of some other completely viable 5x5 options still in 2022. The Volk 5 here still really, really solid. A lot of pro cubers still use the Volk 5. It's still a completely viable option. And we don't have it on this list, but the Outrong WRM is still completely usable, still a really good option. All right, so I'm here to talk about the three by three puzzles we chose this year. First off, we have the RS3M Super. Now, you know the RS3M, it's a budget cube and with the new release, we're actually surprised that it can pretty much live up to the hype. Woo. Just look at that. So this year we have some internal design changes we have some increased magnet strength, which I think is a really good thing. And we have more versions, which I'm gonna talk about later. But I have to say the base version, which is $10, is actually an extreme value. It's just really, really good. We once again have flagship performance. It just performs really, really well. There's actually some world-class cubers. Think of Lou Garrett, who got a 5.2 official average using this cube. He actually used the bulkier version of this cube, which brings me to the second point. There are actually three versions. We have the standard one, which is actually the pick for this video. You also have this version with maglev, and you have the version with core magnets, the ball core version, which is more expensive. That's why I didn't get the spot for the best valued cube. But overall, the RS3 Super is just an amazing release. So from the best valued cube to the most premium cube, we have the GAN 13M maglev. Woo! You know, you definitely notice the difference between just like the premium build quality going from a budget cube to the most premium cube out there. The GAN 13M pretty much has anything you need. It has adjustable magnet strength, dual adjustment system, maglev, UV coating, you name it, this cube has all of it. Guys, it even has repelling edge magnets. What, there are magnets in this cube that repel each other? Doesn't make any sense? Well, it should actually make the auto alignment a bit better. Overall, our opinion is that the GAN 13M maglev performs slightly better than last year's 12M maglev. But you know, we have the budget cube, we have the most premium cube, but the best overall pick, the best 3x3 release of this year has to be the Tornado V3. We actually went with the flagship edition because we think this is just the sweet spot between all the three versions because there are three versions. First of all, we have this cube without core magnets. This, the flagship edition, has core magnets. And then we also have a pioneer version, which is this cube with maglev. I know it's a lot, but the cubes are good. Just that, that, that's all you need to know. Oh, just look at that. No, let, let me do one solve with it. Oh, look at that. I accidentally gave myself a skipped cross scramble. <laughs> yeah, I didn't lock off at all. Yeah, 6.7, that's about my average, but the cube performs so well. Overall, we're, we're all impressed by the performance, we're all impressed by, for example, the adjustment system just is so easy to use, you don't need any tools for that. It has adjustable magnets, it has all of the stuff and the performance is just outstanding. But guys, if you thought that was it, you're wrong. Yes, that did just came out of my ass. <laughs> the fourth cube on the list is the more try Tienma. <laughs> You know, some people know Mortry, but overall it's not a super famous brand. You know, Mortry has released some puzzles, but it seems like this year Mortry really listened to us cubers and made changes to this puzzle, which makes it overall just a really good performing cube. Ooh. You know, guys, it has foot magnets. How about that? <laughs> if you thought three versions of a cube was plenty, well, this boy has four versions. 
Yeah, to make it easier, we recommend version 3. So if you want to try a cube that not a lot of people use, but it's still really, really good, more try is your cube. That's it. All right, guys, so that was it. These were all of our favorite puzzles from this year. If you're interested in any of the puzzles, check out the link in the description. We have a page for all the puzzles on thecubicle.com. Wink, wink. We hope you spend all your money over there. Use discount code QPAD or JRCuber. <laughs> I'm looking forward to coming back to the United States to do this video next year. But until then, these are our favorite puzzles and I will see you. No, you won't see me in the next video, but you will see Jesse or Phil <laughs> in the next video. Ciao, guys. Mm -hmm.